Hello, welcome to the Thursday, March 15th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. Brad today has one of his usual thorough write-ups about the Sigma ransomware that he has been seen again recently. This particular malware has been quite common November last year, has been pretty quiet since then, but uh, this last week or so, there have been multiple sightings of this ransomware again. One little trick they added to their repertoire is that the malicious Word document is now encrypted with a password, and you probably have seen this trick before, but the password itself is then mentioned in the text of the email in order to tell the user how to access the document. Typically, the main reason why the bad guys are encrypting their documents is to evade antivirus scans. And Let's Encrypt started handing out wildcard certificates. This was originally expected in January, but has been pushed back. In order to obtain a wildcard certificate from Let's Encrypt, you do need to use the version two of the Acme protocol. So you may need to update your clients that you're using to request certificates. You also need to be able to prove domain ownership by adding specific text records to your domain. Needless to say, wildcard certificates will make it a lot simpler for you to actually manage your certificates. You only need one certificate that you can then use on various sites within your domain. Also, it does make it a little bit sort of more secure from a privacy point of view in that you don't have to report all of your host names back to Let's Encrypt, where they will, of course, then show up in certificate transparency logs. On the downside, of course, wildcard certificates are more risky in that an inappropriately issued wildcard certificate can be then used to impersonate various host names within your domain. Also, they are a little bit more likely to leak because you are probably going to copy them to multiple servers. And German security blog internetwache.org did an interesting <laughs> study that actually surprised me a little bit. They looked for .ds store files on popular websites. Now, .ds store is a little bit a Mac specific file and it's essentially sort of a helper file that includes information about files in the current directory to make it easier to display the file names and how to display them in Finder the Mac file browser. They did scan the Alexa top 1 million websites and amazingly found in 10,000 different websites a .ds underscore store file. Since uh, this is sort of a Mac specific file, I'm a little bit surprised that it showed up at all, but apparently there are enough websites that are essentially blindly copying data over from developer systems that are running OS X. Now the impact here is data leakage in that the .ts store file essentially contains a directory listing that then could be used to find other files. And they did some automatic analysis of these files and did indeed find a number of, for example, backup files on these servers. And remember how Microsoft had a hard time with some of the Spectre Intel CPU patches and in response released a registry key in order to not update systems that run antivirus that could possibly conflict with some of these patches. Well, uh, yesterday as part of Patch Tuesday, Microsoft announced that they are going to do away with this registry check and systems will continue to receive updates even if they do not have this registry key set. So still make sure that you are running up to date antivirus software that doesn't block any updates, but uh, more users should receive updates now that may not have received updates even though they ran compatible antivirus software, just the software didn't set that registry key. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.